Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on the types of amplifier ADCs. Your microphone will stay muted throughout the presentation. If you have questions, we will address them at the completion of the webinar using the Q&A feature of WebEx. However, you're welcome to type in the questions at any time. Our presenter today is Clark Anderson. Clark worked for 10 years as an automotive test technician before joining HBM as an applications engineer. He currently works out of our Champaign, Illinois office. Clark, it's all yours. Thank you, Krista. So today's uh, webinar, we're going to go over amplifier ADC types and the pros and cons of, of the different ADC converters. So our agenda, uh, we'll kind of go over the scope of it a little bit. We'll talk about ADC basics and how it uh, regards to digitizing time-dependent signals. We'll also look at some ADC types and their main features. And then to close it up, we'll do an ADC comparison. So this this presentation is is a you know just is a compares the pros and cons of different ADC technologies. Um, a lot of times when you're comparing different data acquisition systems, uh, you know you see price differences and, and spec differences, but um, the ADC technology behind that uh, tends to drive you know those differences. So we look at the we're going to do look at the different types of ADCs, and then we're going to look at three properties of of an ADC. So we'll look at its conversion rate or uh, sometimes called the sampling rate, the resolution, and the power dissipation. And then we'll also look at how this affects uh, aliasing of signals. So what are the different types of ADCs? So uh, there, there are different technologies for them. And of course, with everything, there's a pro and a con. Um, so there is no one perfect ADC. Uh, what what makes an ADC work for you is 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 what your application requirements are. So, in this webinar, we're going to focus on the two different types of a, which are important for data acquisition. Uh, the first type we call a single pass ADC, and the, the flash and uh, SAR or successive approximation are two types of single pass ADCs. But in this presentation, we're going to treat them as the same because even though they're different internally from an application point of view, they're, they're, they're the same. And then the other type of ADC we're going to look at is integrating ADC. Um, and sigma delta is, is the most uh, important one of an integrating ADC. So a little background. We talked about the conversion rate or sampling rate. So you know you look it up in Wikipedia. Basically, it's the frequency at which digitized samples of an analog signal are available to the output of the circuitry. And uh, so, if you look at this this chart we have here, you can see the the light blue line signifies an analog signal, and then the points which have the uh, the red bars drawn down from them uh, would be this is the the sample rate or the conversion rate, and you can see there's that conversion interval, which is the time between the two samples. And um, so this sampling rate is going to define the number of samples per second that we take from this continuous signal to make a discrete signal. And um, the misleading term here is that some ADC types, uh, like sigma deltas, um, the internal sampling rate is higher than this conversion rate. Um, so uh, sometimes those two can be confusing. The other th another thing is the resolution. So you hear resolution a lot when we're comparing, you know, DAC units. But we're looking to talk about the resolution here of the ADC, and um, the, it's going to limit the maxim maximum accuracy you can achieve. So there's four charts here, and going from left to right, you can see the, the left one we have our analog signal. And then the next one is, we would call it like a low-res ADC. And you can see the green bars uh, are basically the, you know, the resolution uh, bins there. 
Um, and you can see how if you were to draw a line through the through those bars, it would poorly represent that original analog signal. And then as we go farther to the right, we go from a you know, mid-res and finally up to the high resolution ADC. And as you can see, as that that you know, the, the, the more steps we have for those amplitude bars, the higher our resolution becomes, which leads to a more re representative uh, trace of that original analog signal. But one thing uh, to really note here is that the resolution limits you know, the, the accuracy, but it is not the same as the accuracy. Um, in most modern uh, DAC devices, uh, the, the limiting factor for accuracy is not the uh, it's the analog amplifier. It's not the ADC. And the, th the third part we were going to talk about was heat dissipation. Uh, and this is not something you usually typically think about, you know, when looking at a, a DAC unit, but um, it does, you know, play a part as far as uh, the environments you can use it in, but also how much power the unit's going to take. Um, so it's you know the ADC type and resolution um, kind of drive this heat dissipation. So sigma delta ADCs um, they achieve the resolution by through serial processing and oversampling with one bit ADCs, and, and therefore there's not many internal parts. So they have high you know the high resolution is achieved through the oversampling, which we'll discuss later. Um, so the end result is it has a low power dissipation and it, so it's independent from the resolution. SAR and flash ADCs have m many more internal components as you get higher resolution. Therefore, the power dissipation uh, increases as resolution increases. And then the, the, the heat dissipation is also dependent on the conversion rate. So every conversion cycle needs some electronic switching and the switching has a, a power loss associated with it. So therefore, as you know, the conversion rate increases, so does your power dissipation. So I don't know if you, you know, most people have heard this term aliasing. And the graph here is probably the easiest way to really grasp what aliasing is. As you can see, we have a red trace, which is our original analog signal. And when we have uh, black points that represent uh, the sampling points, and you can see that those sampling points are, are almost the same frequency as the red input signal. Yet the blue signal, which is a trace through those sampling points, um, is the digitized signal. And you can see that it does not represent the original signal at all. It's, it's, it's what we call aliased. So, um, and, and this this is something that's very important because um, you can see that the damage done by the red cycle with many cycle or the red trace with many cycles uh, is far greater than the the blue trace even though they have the same amplitude so we'll discuss later on a few of the uh, ways that DAC or, or ADCs uh, help to reduce aliasing so we'll go more into you know, digitizing a time-dependent signal. The characteristics we're going to look at are the digital resolution and the sample rate. And so our digital resolution, and it's going to depend on our measurement range. And our measurement range is, is defined by the, uh, the voltage reference max and the reference min. And you can see here in the charts that uh, the you know the amp we got the, the V ref max and the V ref min, and that defines our measurement range. And then that measurement range gets divided up amongst uh, you know the bits here, and that that helps. That's our digital resolution. Um, also, we're going to have some noise inherent in an ADC. You know, we call it a quanti quantization noise. Um, there's going to be a maximum error of plus or minus 0.5 bits, and, and the analog value has to be assigned to the quantization level. Um, so another one more bit would be an increase, would be greater than a six decibel increase in signal to noise ratio. 
So what is signal to noise ratio? Well, is the, the signal to noise ratio is basically the ratio of our signal power to our noise power. So you can see here SNR over P signal, P, or with equals P signal over P noise. And um, a ratio of greater than, higher than one to one is desirable because it indicates that we have more signal than noise. Um, so you can, if you're going to compare, you know, the, an SNR, it, it needs to be measured at the same impedance and, and within the same bandwidth. So when you're comparing ADCs or, or DAC units uh, for their, S, you know, if they give an SNR, um, you need to, you need, it needs to be, you know, an, kind of an apples to apples comparison. So we've talked a lot about sample rate, and once again, here's a chart showing, um, you know, how important sample rate is um, to to prevent aliasing. And here you can see uh, we we have a blue original analog trace, and then our points, sampling points by the the dots, and then the orange line is the digitized signal. And you can see this this is a a, a good representation of the original analog blue signal. And here, this case, you can see the digitized orange trace is a very poor representation of the original analog signal. Um, th there's, a, there's a theorem called the Shannon Nyquist theorem, and it states that um, the, the, the Nyquist frequency is half the sample rate. Um, so, you, and you only need, so you need two points to define a, a cycle. Um, this, is, this is acceptable in the telecommunications to reproduce a frequency but it is not acceptable to reproduce you know, a signal with the same form and amplitude. So you can see here that by, by having the fewer sampling points, we, we've basically in a condition called undersampling. The original trace here, it's the blue trace, it's a 25 hertz signal. And you can see our sampling points. And those are almost at the same 25 hertz. And then the reproduced digital signal, you can see, is only a 2.3 hertz signal. So even though the amplitudes are uh, reach the same max level, the, the cycle count the number of cycles in these signals is, is drastically different, which you know, is very important uh, when you're collecting data. So once again, the, the aliasing, which we talked a little about earlier, um, how do we avoid this? Well, there's two main ways the ADCs work to, to prevent aliasing. Uh, the first one uh, is oversampling, and the second one is with an anti-aliasing filter. So oh, if we talk about oversampling, um, once again, we use the shannon Nyquist sampling theorem. So if you look at the chart on the left. We have our noise energy versus our frequency. And you can see the red area. And our sample rate is defined, you know, shown here by F sample. And then the Nyquist is shown there, F Nyquist. So, you can see there's a lot of noise there. And by oversampling, what we're going to do is we're going to take 2 to the n times 2 times the, the Nyquist. And that produces this f oversample frequency. And it's shown here in the right uh, plot. And you can see that um, we're far higher than the noise energy there. So we'll have the noise reduction um, without an analog low pass filter. Um, but we can also use an anti-aliasing filter at the signal input. Uh, this, this plot here shows a Bessel filter. And so we, if we, the numbers down below, we have uh, are the frequency, but we have uh, 0 0.4, uh, which is point, so it's 0.4 of the cutoff frequency. And you can see we have a very high amplitude up until that point. Um, and then if, 
if we go four times the cutoff frequency, you can see that uh, shown by the plot here, about 99% of those interferences are cut out. Uh, but if we go, uh, if we sa uh, to sample without any aliasing, you see if we go eight times the cutoff frequency or 20 times the signal frequency, um, we're, we're beyond any aliasing effects. So our recommendation is to always sample 15 to 20 times higher than the signal frequency. Um, if you use a cutoff frequency uh, anti-aliasing filter, so of 10 to 15 percent of sample frequency, um, and the characteristic of your filter, uh, if you're using uh, me or if you're measuring frequency or pulses, uh, we would recommend a Bessel. Um, and if you're measuring amplitudes, uh, typically we'd measure uh, recommend a Butterworth. So now let's talk about the ADC types. We we talked about a, a sigma delta ADC, and this is a little flow chart um, for a sigma delta converter block diagram. Um, this is really more for just reference. We're not going to go into the in too deep depth on on the, the the workings of them. What's important is what are the pros and what are the cons. So for a sigma delta ADC. The pros are we get high resolution. They're typically 24-bit. Um, this will allow us to have high accuracy, um, a high dynamic range, and a high signal-to-noise ratio. The input interrogator acts as a low-pass filter, so there's no need for an extra uh, analog anti-alias filter. They're power efficient and cost-effective. But of course, like I said, everything you know has its pros and cons. Um, and so the cons for a sigma delta are the sample rate is limited uh, due, due to the over oversampling, downsampling. So typically, they don't go above uh, 250 kilosamples a second. And um, the, without with the integrated digital filter part of the design, there's the possibility for pre-shoot and overshoot of signals. They have a very fast rise time, and you can see that here in this plot here, of the square wave and the green being the digitized signal. And you can see there's some overshoot, pre-shoot, and then some um, some overshoot. Excuse me. <coughs> the other type, oh, I'm sorry. There's also the delta sigma converter. Um, this converts the analog input signal into a serial bitstream um, with a much higher clock rate than the signal frequency bitstream, and it's it's a one-bit serial signal, and its average level represents the average level of the input signal level. It has a digital low-pass filter decimator, and it changes serial bitstream into a data word with n bit, and it reduces the clock rate to double the bandwidth of the analog input signal. So it, the integration is, it, it does it, and these graphs show this, the, the difference between the upper sum and the lower sum are used to calculate the area under the function. And so the smaller the, ch the, the change, the, in, the smaller the difference from them results in a more accurate um, difference between the sums. So if we look at a one belt, one bit delta sigma modulator, the difference between the maximum input voltage and the current analog input signal are integrated over a time, and is the resultant voltage is then compared to zero. The integration time and the level to which the voltage of the capacitor is discharged uh, depends on the time when the output signal changes from a high to low. And for this reason, the voltage polarity at the end of the in integrator changes. It is lower than zero. Uh, it, if it is lower than zero, the comparator sets a digital low to the latch. And if it is higher the zero, than zero, the comparator sets a digital high to the latch. If for higher frequency input signals, the output level decreases, and the integra integrator behaves like a low-pass filter. 
So the integrated signal contains the same average level as the as the average level of analog input signal. And the higher the clock rate, the more accurate is the average voltage contained in the serial bit stream. And that's why the desired signal should be oversampled by a large factor. And the energy noise of the oversampled signal is the same as the energy noise of a signal sampled with the Nyquist frequency, but it is distributed through a larger spectrum and can later be cut off by a digital low-pass filter. And if the analog input signal is high, the bitstream contains many digital highs. And if it is low, the bitstream contains many digital lows. And if it is nearly zero, the bitstream changes permanently between a high and a low. And so the operation mode of a digital low-pass filter or, or decimizer, I mean, it, it reduces the sampling rate to twice the Nyquist frequency by downsampling. It cuts off the higher frequencies with the unwanted noise signal. It increases the, the resolution of our output. And the simplest decimation structure is just an average counter or a shift register. So what are the advantages? Um, it avoids the use of a high precision analog circuits for anti-aliasing filter. The sample and hold circuit is not needed because of the continuous high sample rate. Um, we have an increase of our signal to noise ratio by the noise shaping. We get higher resolutions because of our high signal to noise ratio, typically 16 to 24 bit. And we have lower costs. But the disadvantages are it's a, it can be a long throughput time and, and only allow the measure of signals with a small bandwidth. And it's not applicable to impulse measurement or very high frequencies. So another ADC type it, we talked about was a flash converter. And a flash conversion is a direct conversion. It's a linear voltage divider with two to the end resistors, uh, pr which provides the reference voltage at, at each comparator, which compares it to the amp analog input signal. The comparator output is generally fed into a digital encoder, which converts the binary or converts the input into a binary value. For each bit resolution, a comparator is needed. Uh, end of the bit resolution equals two to n comparators. This uses wide band low gain stages as comparators. And the digital encoder consists of logical and or elements. And the resolution can be increased by folding circuits and the comparators are reused multiple times. And the number of comparators can then therefore be reduced to two to the n over n with, a, with n folding circuits. And there's the sample and hold circuit, and it's in front of the comparators to avoid a change of input signal during the conversion time. And basically, the switch connects to the, the capacitor uh, to the output of the buffer amplifier. The buffer, buffer amplifier charges or discharges the capacitor so that the voltage across the capacitor is practically equal or proportional to the input voltage. In the hold mode, the switch disconnects the capacitor from the buffer and the capacitor is invariably discharged by its own leakage current. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of the flash conversion? Um, the, the advantages are the conversion time does not increase with increased resolution. Uh, they're extremely fast. So we're talking megahertz or gigahertz. This enables very high sample rates. Um, you know, for gigahertz applications, it's a simple architecture as it only requires the logical elements. Um, but disadvantages, um, it's not usable for high resolutions. It's a max, typically maximum 8 bit, which is 256 comparators. Uh, the sample and hold circuit is needed in front to suppress sparkle codes caused by imperfect uh, input settings. Uh, the, it's high cost and a high power loss. Uh, the other type was a, a SAR or successive approximation. 
quarter, and it, the way it works is like a weighing process and, and a successive approximation to the analog input signal. It only uses one single high speed and high accuracy comparator. So the analog signal is compared to the output of the DX, which is updated by previously uh, decided bits from from MSB to LSB. And these bits these bits are determined and set to a SAR register, but only one bit at a time. So the weighing method builds on the result, uh, not in one, but in a series of comparison steps, and it is checked whether the analog input voltage has at least half the maximum value. Then the MSBs are set to one, and if the voltage is less, then it is set to zero, and the comparison with the next highest point repeatedly, next highest point repeatedly. The result is present even if the result was determined for the LSB. So the result will take the longer the greater it would take longer uh, the greater your resolution is. So the advantages and disadvantages of the of a SAR uh, high resolutions are typically up to 16 bit. A simple architecture, um, less expensive and lower power loss. Uh, but the disadvantages are the, the serial nature limits speed to a few mega samples a second. Um, here's the SAR converter block diagram. So the, the analog input voltage is held on a sample hold. And to implement the binary search algorithm, the n-bit register is first set to mid-scale. And this forces the DAC output to be VREF by divided by two, where VREF is the reference voltage provided to the ADC. A comparison is then performed to determine if VN is less than or greater than VDAC. If VN is less than VDAC, the comparator output is a logic low, and the MSB of the register is cleared to logic zero. Uh, the SAR control logic then moves to the next bit down, forces that bit high, and does another comparison. The sequence continues all the way down to the LSB, and once this is done, the conversion is complete, and the end bit digital word is available to the register. So if we look at a flash converter diagram, uh, it's an end bit converter, and the circuit employs two to the n minus one comparators. Uh, a resistive divider with two to the n resistors provides the reference voltage. The reference voltage for each comparator is one least significant bit greater than the reference voltage for the comparator immediately below it. Each comparator produces a one when its analog input voltage is higher than the reference voltage applied to it. Otherwise, the comparator output is zero. Thus, if an analog input is between VX4 and VX5 uh, comparators, one through four produce ones, and the remaining produce zeros. The point where the code changes from ones to zeros is the point at which the input signal becomes smaller than the representative comparator reference voltage levels. So what are the advantages or the pros and cons of, of SAR and Flash AD? So high sampling rates possible, so up to mega samples a second for SAR, um, but even giga samples a second with Flash. They have medium resolution. So SAR is 12-bit, 16-bit, up to 18. Uh, flash are usually 8-bit, but sometimes 10 or 12. Um, no impulse response error, as there's no filter that's built in. The cons of these two ADCs are uh, limited resolution when compared to a Sigma Delta. Um, uh, the anti-aliasing filter is, is needed on the, on the front end. Uh, this adds to system cost and there's high power loss. So this, this is a very useful chart because it kind of really sums up everything we've been going over. If we, on the y-axis here, we have resolution. And on the x-axis, we have conversion rate. So if we talked about delta sigma ADCs, and you can see that they have the highest resolution, but they also have the lowest conversion rate or sampling rate. And as we go from left to right, 
you can see we there's the SAR ADC. Um, there's one we kind of, we didn't talk about pipeline. There's a folding and interpolating, and then on the far right we have flash, and you can see flash has the fastest uh, conversion rate, uh, but it's at the sacrifice of resolution. Um, and you can also see that uh, you know they, they they encompass. You can see there typically these, these ellipses. Uh, you know, so there's a range. Um, just because your unit you're looking at uses, say, a SAR ADC, um, you can see that it could have a, a wide change in the conversion rate. So here's the comparison table. So we've got the type of ADC, application, uh, conversion rate, and resolution. So if we look at uh, SAR, um, they're typically used for high-speed data acquisition, including transients. Uh, conversion rates are up to five mega samples a second, and resolution is used typically 12 to 18 bits. Um, in integrating ADC, uh, typical U application digital multimeters, uh, about up to one kilo sample a second, and usually greater than 20 bits of resolution. Flash ADCs are typically used for oscilloscopes. Uh, they have up to one giga sample a second and a resolution of 8 to 12 bits. And then Sigma Delta ADC, uh, frequency, frequency analyze, analyzers, and slow to medium speed data acquisition. Uh, and by that we mean no, no transients. And up to 250 kilosamples a second and typically a 20 to 24 bit resolution. So usually as someone looking to buy a DAX system, uh, you know, or pro, you know, for your application, uh, basically, here's this is a table that shows you. If, so, if we start on the left with our signal type, uh, which we've talked about transients, uh, you typically see transients, transient signals, and uh, destructive material testing, um, rock shock testing, blast tests, pyrotechnic, uh, chicken gun tests, separation tests, uh, Hopkinson bar, or Sharpie pendulum. And if you're doing those kind of tests, uh, you can see that a SAR and FLASH are your best for performance, and a Sigma Delta would be rather a poor choice. Um, if you're doing a periodic signal type, which is found in vibration uh, applications, sound, noise, and power, uh, the, the SAR and FLASH are, are a good fit, but a, a Sigma Delta is, is the best. Another type is a random signal. Um, this is uh, typically non-destructive material testing, uh, vibration testing, functional tests, performance tests, and experimental stress tests. Uh, and you can see that a, a SAR and flash uh, are, are not as, quite as good. We say fair here, where and a sigma delta is the best choice. And then there's always the case where you have a random or mixed signal. Um, so uh, fault finding, say uh, vibration, some vibration tests, functional tests can also be under this, performance testing, uh, road load data acquisition, and just general purpose data acquisition. And here you can see that a SAR and a flash and a sigma delta are both a good fit for this. Uh, I guess what I would say is if you're, if you're mixed, Signal tends to be more towards the transient, then you'd be better off you know, with a SAR or flash. But if if the mix has has less of the transients and more of peri, you know the periodic or ran, you know just the, the regular random, we'd uh, you'd want to go with a sigma delta. So if we look at HBM products, um, which we have a, a number of products, what what types of ADCs are they using? Um, here in the top right, there's some pictures of uh, GENDAC units, and most GENDACs use SAR type ADCs. They're, they're very good for transient applications and good for repetitive signals. Uh, once again, they have medium resolution and uh, are 14 to 16 to 18 bit. It depends on the board. Um, we said they're good for transients because there's no pre-shoot or overshoot. Um, but the analog filter is needed, which leads to a higher price per channel. Um, 
Then we have also GenVac 250 kilosample a second Excel input boards, and these use Sigma Delta ADCs. And it, it's great for repetitive signals, uh, like noise and vibration. Um, and of course, once again, it's a limited performance on a transient signal. Uh, but they do have high resolution and dynamic range. Uh, that fast transient will uh, a fast transient will pre-shoot and overshoot. Um, but the advantage, once again, of a, a Sigma Delta is there's no extra filters needed, um, which reduces your price per channel. And uh, down here in the lower left, we have a Quantum X module, which you can see also uses a Sigma Delta ADC. Um, there's also our Somat product line. And um, the SOMAT EDAC and EDAC Lite use the SAR, or successive approximation. Um, and then below that, we show an MGC Plus unit, uh, which it uses the Sigma Delta ABC. So if you have additional questions about this webinar or uh, any of our products, um, you can find lots of information on our website at www.hbm.com. Um, all these webinars will be listed online uh, on, our, on our webinar area section. Um, training can be found at our academy section. Uh, any technical questions can, of course, be addressed to support at usa.hbm.com, or you can alternatively call our phone number at 1-800-578-4260. So thank you for attending our webinar. Uh, you can uh, send questions. Uh, through the, ch the question and answer window, um, or you can email them. Uh, you know, if you have questions later, also. Thank you. Thanks, Clark. Everyone, I will send out Clark's presentation to everyone who attended today, so you'll get an email later this afternoon with a PDF of that presentation, which obviously has all of our contact information. But at this time, we'd be glad to take some questions if you want to type them in um, to the Q&A window within WebEx. Clark, it looks like one person saying that they need to take data really quickly, for example, like explosions and things like that. So. Just wanted to clarify which ADC they're going to need to do that kind of application. Yeah, the, the flash ADC, or the you know the, the the flash or SAR, which which would definitely be the GenDAC, uh, uh, the Genesis systems. All right. Since we don't have any other questions, we'll go ahead and finish up for this afternoon. If you do think of questions, you're welcome to contact, contact us. Thank you all for joining us. Have a good afternoon.